Hi, this is the first of what hopefully will be a number of uh, different uh, videos on 3D printing and beekeeping. And uh, in this uh, first video, I'm going to be showing you the uh, 3D printed uh, nucleus colony, sort of nucleus colony uh, hive uh, that I've printed. And uh, you can take a look at that and see how you feel about perhaps joining me in this great adventure. Uh, tomorrow, or the day after at the latest, I'll be issuing a video showing me installing a package of bees uh, into the colony or into the hive uh, that uh, we've just uh, assembled today. And uh, you may want to uh, stay tuned to uh, keep informed about all the exciting things that are going on. Printable Science B presents a 3D printed three frame nucleus colony hive. The standard commercial uh, beekeeping hive is called uh, a Langstroth, named after uh, its inventor, although the Langstroth hive today has little resemblance to the uh, patent that was uh, granted uh, Mr. Langstroth. And the term Langstroth hive is now applied to a whole bunch of uh, different configurations of a basic idea that is uh, a box in which you can have movable frames and uh, I think there's a couple other features but uh, basically most hives come under the definition of what uh, one would call a Langstroth hive anyway. The problem with a Langstroth hive and 3D printing is that most consumer end machines are just not large enough to print a whole hive. But uh, that doesn't mean that uh, we're necessarily kept from 3D printing our own hive. Here is one of the first things you will definitely need if you're going into 3D printing your beehive, and that is the Anycubic Chiron printer. It has a build plate area of 400 by 400 by, I think, 450, and uh, it's a very large machine. It uh, costs about... Uh, on sale around $600 Canadian, I guess that's around $500 US, and uh, it is really the only machine you can choose. Now Creality makes a couple of large format printers, but they are just not suitable. First of all, the they take a long time to heat, and uh, even uh, the larger one suffers from the fact that it's the SR7, I think it's called, in that the build or the heating pad, while the bed is 500 by 500, which is even larger than this Anycubic Chiron, the heating pad is only 300 by 300. So if you're going to print in only PLA, then a Creality large format machine is probably worth looking at. But we need to stay with filaments when we're 3D printing a beehive that fulfill two requirements. First of all, they have to be able to weather the outdoors. And uh, PLA, as uh, we've come to appreciate, isn't particularly robust enough. Uh, the temperatures get too hot and it'll distort, melt, and all that stuff. Now, the other problem we have is uh, it being food safe. So, in order to use a food safe filament we have to look to either PETG or ASA or uh, HIPS, H-I-P-S, High Impact Polystyrene and interestingly enough uh, uh, High Impact Polystyrene is what uh, commercial plastic hives are made of so that's probably the way to go although my initial uh, foray into this has been uh, going with the uh, food safe uh, pet G. So the thing is, even at 400 by 400, which is like 15 by 15 inches, you uh, still aren't, it still isn't big enough for a standard Langstroth hive. But we can make it smaller because the bees certainly don't necessarily cotton on to that very well. And indeed, what the size that we're going to adopt is uh, a cavity size of 300 by 300 by 210. And that actually matches the dimensions of the interior cavity of a 
popular alternate beehive called the War A hive. And uh, as you can see, here is a Langstroth style hive in War A hive dimensions that was printed quite easily and handily on a any cubic chiron. What more could you ask for? Now, in addition to an any cubic chiron, what you're going to need is a lot of time because these take a long time to print. Now, you can improve things as I have. This particular uh, printer I have currently has a 0.8 millimeter uh, a nozzle, and uh, I'm laying down filament at uh, 0.5 millimeters. Uh, uh, for each, uh, well, that's my Z layer uh, height is 0.5 millimeters. And I'll probably even move into a one millimeter nozzle and see if I can bump up the layer height to 0.75 or even 8 and see how that goes. But this was, uh, this one was actually printed uh, uh, with uh, a 0 0.2, uh, a 0.4 millimeter nozzle at 0.2 millimeter height and it took days. Uh, two days, I think, maybe. So, uh, it has uh, the, so as I say, it's uh, the size of a War A hive. The cavity size is a War A hive, but it is uh, a Langstroth hive nonetheless because uh, the philosophy we adopt with the movable frames is the same as a Langstroth. Now, the inner uh, mechanism or the inner workings of a hive uh, is a Langstroth hive is the movable frame. And here is a movable frame. Now this is uh, the outside of the frame, the frame frame if you will, is uh, printed uh, in uh, PET G, uh, or maybe this is PLA, I can't really remember. Uh, but, you know, we'll work on that. Uh, and into that I have placed a piece of commercially available uh, Langstroth foundation which uh, can be cut down and uh, then you get the frame and then the frame sits inside the sits inside the outer case and you can put uh, in uh, this uh, particular this particular case eight frames and uh, build up. Now one of the reasons I personally like this smaller hive size is that uh, Langstroth hives can get incredibly heavy. If you're dealing with the standard uh, deep super, uh, the, uh, the hive with all the frames loaded with honey can come in at around 90 pounds. And many people find that a little excessive, so they've uh, adopted for at least the honey part of uh, their uh, beehive, what's called a, a medium a super, and uh, it is, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a little bit, uh, it's not quite as high as the super, but even it can get up to, you know, 60, 70 pounds, so it's, it's not uh, particularly light either. But this, you know, you're getting even smaller. While you may feel this may compromise the happiness of your bees, you can always build up and put on a second box and uh, that, uh, or a third box or a fourth box. You're certainly not limited to just having a single box and your bees can frolic and have fun with whatever space you want to give them. Now, it is possible to, uh, to 3D print the foundation, as I've done here. I haven't tried it out yet, so uh, I can't speak to... Uh, how successful that's going to be, but uh, that will be one of the things uh, you may want to uh, keep track of as uh, I experiment with this uh, 3D printed beehive. But the frame is pretty straightforward. We print this piece here, which is the top of the frame and the two sides, and then we uh, take the uh, foundation and we put it in the grooves. And then we take the bottom bar and there's a little bit of give in this and we 
put the foundation so that it fits in the fits in the frame and then it snaps in and there we have our frame and the same principle is applies for first of all cutting a uh, commercial uh, foundation and then uh, snapping it into place at all. So there we have three frames all together. I'm going to just put those in there for now. In beekeeping, uh, there's what is known as a nucleus colony, and that is uh, a smaller frame than the full Langstroth uh, that has fewer frames in it, and this is for either developing a new colony uh, for sale or simply just not overwhelming a new uh, starter uh, colony with uh, uh, too much space uh, to uh, heat and protect. What this video is going to demonstrate is a three-frame 3D printed nucleus colony. So what you, uh, although it's not really a nuke in the sense because it has all the features of a uh, full hive, but I wanted to start with the uh, smaller one, the smaller nucleus type hive, in order to make sure I had all my dimensions right and all the design features right before committing to all the print time required to uh, pull off a full hive. So let's go through the parts of the hive that are printed and assembled and what we start with is what's called the baseboard. Now there are two types of uh, bottom boards, I should say not baseboard, bottom boards. There are what are called uh, ones with uh, just a, a bottom board that uh, sits there but uh, in recent times that uh, has given way a bit to a bottom board with a removable screen and so that allows uh, mites and pollen and other aspects of detritus that uh, get into the hive to fall through the screen at the bottom into a bottom board at the top which can be pulled out, inspected and cleaned. So here we have uh, the very bottom piece of a bottom board with a removable screen and we have this part as well which is the middle part, and what that does is with those little grooves there, you can see that they fit into there, and that all slides together. And if you can see, there's a channel left. And then finally, the third part, and the uppermost part of the hive, or I should say at the bottom board, slides on to this like that. And now you can see we have two channels. And uh, that right there is what's called our landing board for the bees to get in. So, that being the case, that is our bottom board ready to go. Now, the next thing we have, well, well let's get to that later, uh, are uh, our chamber or our box, root box in this case, to begin with, is printed. And it has the rabbits along the inner edge for frames to sit on. And that sits on that sits on the bottom board. And uh, you can see there's the landing strip for the bees. And then on top of that goes the top board or crown board. And the crown board consists of two pieces. And why are these two pieces? Why this? Why not just print the whole thing on a 3D printer? Well, there's this thing called overhang that doesn't allow you to have uh, pieces that are sort of hanging in midair. And uh, by 
putting this together in uh, a couple of pieces with these uh, connectors, we can print the, the sophistication that we need in our pieces uh, successfully on a 3D printer. So we have this part and then this part and they slide on. And then we have our top board. And there you have it. And as you can see, that fits uh, on the top. It's the top board. And uh, we're just about ready to go. Now we will be adding a, a sugar feeder here. And uh, to do that, we need to provide a little bit more space for the side, for the height of the sugar feeder to not get in the way of the lid. So we have a spacer board and we place that on top there. And then finally, we have the top cover and it fits like that. So that's pretty straightforward. Now, getting this ready for a, a new bee colony, we would remove the top cover, the spacer, and the uh, crown board. And we'd uh, prime this up with uh, three frames and space them properly. And as you can see, we're all ready to go. Put the top board on. The spacer board and the top board and we're almost almost ready to go because of course we've got our bottom board and our screen board and these are these are both 3d printed as well there's the screen and there's the bottom board and in those grooves that we made available, we would put the screen board in the top because that's what the bees will actually be walking on. And underneath, we put the bottom board to catch all the junk. And also, uh, the bottom board also prevents uh, the cold air from outside and provides a little bit of thermal insulation. And uh, there is our 3D printed three frame kind of nucleus beehive. Now you may want to make a point of uh, checking back because we're now going to take this and we're going to install a package of sorts into this and uh, see just how well this works. Thanks for watching. Make sure to uh, check us out soon so you can uh, catch the installation of uh, that uh, package of bees uh, tomorrow or the day after. And uh, be sure to check out the description for links to where you can download the STL files to print uh, this uh, beehive. And if you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. And please feel free to visit us at our website at printablescience.com where all the science that fits, we print.